Hello and welcome to... Wow, that's red. Let me turn that down a little bit. Hello and welcome to Peace, Love, and Robots. It's a podcast about anything and everything and all that is in between. And I'm your host, the same host as always, Jeremy. And this is Season 2. Episode number 10 for November 18th, 2021. We're one week from Thanksgiving already here in the U.S. One week. Hope you got out there and you bought your turkey or your uh, tofurkey. Actually, I hope you didn't get your tofurkey because if you're eating tofu turkey, then I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if we can be friends. And maybe, you know, I, I've never actually tried tofu turkey. I've, I've had tofu in my miso soup, but uh, that's about it. That's the only tofu I'm gonna have. <sighs> no tofu at Thanksgiving. As always, this podcast is brought to you by the ads you hear. At the beginning and end of the show, so if you listen all the way through, I will forever be in your debt. You know, speaking of debt, I have a figure for you. If I sell just 39,991 more copies of my book on Amazon, I'll be able to pay off my student loans. (laughs) So if you haven't ordered your copy yet, what are you waiting for? It'll make a great gift for friends and enemies alike. And there we go. I talked through all the music. You know, I'm thinking about the tofu thing. They talk about how, uh, why would I alienate half my audience if I take a stand on something? I, I guarantee you I'm only alienating like three people <laughs> that I, I don't even, I know like one vegan in my life, maybe two. No, no, there's. There's three vegans that I know, and and you know I, I I'm okay if you want to eat tofu turkey, but not at my house. Um, yeah. So so I, I all can come, but uh, I I'm gonna eat turkey in front of you, and and I'm gonna enjoy it. A succulent turkey with bacon on top of it, stuffed with uh, bread and sausage and all this good stuff that uh, that I make. On Thanksgiving, I'm the cook for Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, it's my favorite meal to eat, and my favorite meal to make. So I'm looking really, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. My mouth is watering at the thought. It's Pavlovian when I hear turkey and Thanksgiving together. My mouth starts to water. Yeah. Anyway, I'm now kind of in that weird limbo between projects where I'm not sure. What to get start? What to start working on? Since I have the a lot of options, I have notebooks full of ideas and little scratched out notes in uh, in Google Docs, a bunch of untitled documents that I sort of like opened up and sort of typed out a couple of words. Uh, I, I'm learning how to be organized, but I have all these options, and I have fiction, I have nonfiction, all these ideas and premises. I, I just I don't know what's going to get my engine going right now, but I'm sure I'll get there. It's it's I didn't realize it until now. It's it's a bit like how I used to be at the video store back in the day or even on Netflix now or the hundreds of other streaming services. There are so many choices. It takes forever to pick one. I, I remember being in the video store, my wife wondering why I'm taking so long. And I don't know why I took so long in the video store and why I take so long on Netflix or Hulu or HBO Max. Sometimes I don't even settle on anything new. I end up watching, I don't know, The Office again. Well, not The Office. Arrested Development or Scrubs. <laughs> and I just, uh, I'm I'm not sure if I'm ready to commit to something dramatic or uh, something easy to watch. What's my mood? I have just so many choices. Sometimes I'll look at the queue I've created on Netflix and I know full well that everything on there is something I wanted to watch at one point. And still, nothing will spark my interest. I don't know. Uh, Picking out a new project idea is a lot like my podcast life. You know, I was thinking about it today. I've been podcasting off and on since something like 2006. Now, those early shows, thank goodness, are long gone. Like, 
you can't find them anywhere, so don't go looking. But I've had a lot of podcast ideas that I've either never launched or launched and left to die on the vine. I thought today, I think I'll go over a few of them on this show and try to justify why I haven't done them or why I gave up on them. Who knows? Most recently, at the beginning of the pandemic, I started something called the Socially Distant Podcast. I thought, well, oh, maybe this is kind of a historic moment, and it really was, that needed to be documented, and it was. So I was hoping for more, hoping. I speak English. It's my first language. Uh, I was hoping for more listener engagement, and it really was minimal. I'm not famous enough to get people to, uh, to sort of jump in. And to be honest with you, uh, when I saw... Uh, the guy from the office, I can't think of his name right now. He directed Quiet Place. Anyway, he did uh, some good news, and he did it better than I could have done it. And uh, I was like, forget it. Uh, he, he's uh, he's winning. So I'm just going to let him have his glory because he deserves it. So I stopped, and I, I made three episodes. <laughs> A few years ago, I started another podcast called Storytime with Uncle Jeremy, and that one lasted a bit longer. It lasted 59 episodes. I, I really started it for Napod Pomo, which is going on right now, National Podcast Post Month, by the way. it's There's lots of people doing that this year. I sat out for obvious reasons. And, and that's probably why there are so many episodes of Storytime with Uncle Jeremy, because they were pretty much recorded all around the same time. And it's mostly a collection of different stories pulled from my life experiences. A few opinion pieces thrown in there, too. But I bailed on this one after a while and didn't feel like it was worth restarting when I launched this podcast. I wanted something fresh, a clean slate. Now, my first podcast on Spreaker was Because I Said So. And this was something I started with my sons. And I really meant to return to it, but it's been difficult to nail down a time to do it. And my daughters want to be in the mix as well. It was a lot of fun, and my youngest son in particular has asked multiple times about doing it again, and I really should take him up on it. It lasted almost 40 episodes, and until now, it was my most successful podcast endeavor. The biggest podcast regret that I have, outside of Because I Said So, because honestly, it was a great way to bond with my kids, uh, was Mind the Gaps. I, I just really like the concept of that show. Uh, watching movies I've never seen before and then talking about them, it's its all, it's kind of cool, I think. I've always been a movie fan and watching classics and experiencing them for the first time is a ton of fun. And I might actually return to it, but the prep for each episode, which was watching a movie once, if not twice, taking down notes, writing jokes, looking at the behind-the-scenes info, all that, it's very time-consuming and if you know anything about me, time is the most finite of resources that I have, and I don't have a lot of time to do it. So I've actually considered just turning it the concept into a book because you can write about movies and books without, uh, without you know, being sued for copyright infringement because uh, I almost turned another book idea into a podcast, and that was called My Oral History. And the gist of that show was going through the soundtrack of my life and Tying a specific memory to a specific song. I and mean, what stopped me from doing that show was I didn't want to get sued. <laughs> the legality of using music in a podcast, since anything that has a copyright is verboten, unless you pay for a license, which is thousands of dollars, which I don't have. I would have more if you buy my book, maybe. Uh, I could get that license, but um, I've considered just writing it as a book, just using the song titles and because I can't use lyrics because of, you know, copyright to get my point across. Because you can't claim fair use. You really can't. That's why the music on this is something I paid for, that I have the license for. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to play a song by Social Distortion, for instance, or uh, Elvira by the Oak Ridge Boys, because, uh, you know, they, they all fit into my own, you know, my story uh, somewhere, just so you know. Uh, I just don't want to, you know, lose the money I make from my books and more <laughs> if I get sued. Uh, but those last two ideas, they're still not out of the realm of possibility. I still might write them as books. Heck, I got to put seven out or six more out before I'm 50. So, uh, yeah, that would be two more. So maybe, maybe if I sit down and write them, 
I don't get to it. But it's really hard to look at that graveyard of failed ideas. It's hard. You know, it's their presence sort of shows a lack of grit, a lack of hustle, a lack of stick to itiveness. But then again, a sketchbook full of half drawn figures is evidence of someone at least trying. And that's the perspective I need to remember when looking at the past. So trying and failing is better than not trying at all. What do you think? You can let me know by sending me an email at peaceloveandrobotspod at gmail.com. That's all one word, peaceloveandrobotspod at gmail.com. Or leave me a voicemail at 585-371-8986. That's 585-371-8986. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to see more content from me... Check out my Substack. Yeah, I've been talking about this every week because I post a new column every Monday and Friday. Along with the podcast, that's three things of content from me every single week. There's more of me to love than you know. And I'd love to have you subscribe over there. You can even get it sent right to your email. Yeah, write to your email. You don't have to go any other place after going there. You just sign up for your email and they get sent to you with everything else, including coupons from DSW or, uh, I don't know, whatever other store you throw your junk email onto. Yeah, I do that. But most importantly, you can now buy my book on Amazon. It's available both on Kindle and in paperback. If you buy both versions, I can make more money. You know, I make more on the Kindle, which is obvious because there's no printing involved. But if you want the paperback, that's just as good because you can, you know, put it on your shelf. And when your friends are over, you can point at the book and say, hey, this guy I know, he uh, wrote a book. Or, or you can point to that table that's a little wobbly, that's no longer wobbly because... Propping it up is a copy of my book, My Life's Work. Yeah, you can do that. Peace, love, and robots. How do you know you won't like it if you don't try it? <laughs> <laughs>